Thanks for nothing. I didn't see it coming. One day, I was a successful restaurateur in New York City and Nantucket Island, and three months later, I had nothing. My husband was facing the reality of a sexual identity. Our beautiful Nantucket home went into foreclosure, and our two thriving restaurants were reclaimed by our investors, and I was left with nothing. Well, not exactly nothing. I had my kids, with no way to support them but me. I took full responsibility for all three children, one still in diapers, penniless and on unemployment. I was 40 years old. I discovered Buddhism through chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo and basing my life on this law of cause and effect. I began to feel wisdom, clarity, and access to my greatest potential. This was the key to transforming my misfortune into fortune, a sun ray of hope among a very scary reality. Losing it all was life giving me the chance to start fresh. I had no one to rely on but myself. But thanks to my strong determination and discipline, I began to feel dialed into my own unique path. Once I gained the courage to return to my career as a restaurateur and open Rifrulo, a small neighborhood cafe in Brookline, I struggled so much, my very essence was shaken to the core. Day to day, I never knew whether I would have the finances to keep the doors open. Going to the bank was gut-wrenching. I tried to hold my head high, but I was ashamed of the balances and the overdrafts in my account. My investors were beginning to question my, my direction and whether I could succeed. I worked day and night, going home late at night, keeping the household together, cleaning up after the dog we never could potty train, helping the kids with homework, it seemed never-ending. I learned how to create value in every single moment of the day. It was goddamn hard and not pretty, but I didn't give up. Rising early every morning, leaving the house before the kids, I would go to work scared shitless, not knowing what I would face or whether I would be capable of handling it. I didn't know the community, and the community didn't know me. I was under constant scrutiny from family members and friends. How was I going to raise a six, nine, and 13-year-old while simultaneously trying to build a business to support us that consumed all of my time? I couldn't even afford childcare. Most of the time, my kids were left to their own devices, which made me feel horribly irresponsible. Watching them take a heavy load of responsibility with very few resources was painful. I often felt I had failed as a parent. Balancing their needs with my responsibilities stretched my life beyond what I ever thought I was capable of handling. Failing, in this case, was not an option. My life was strengthening. <laughs> Here is where destiny meets reality, because the struggle that I went through to realize a dream the losing it all and the nothingness I was left with was actually the catalyst to transform my small, shallow life into a contributing community member, a joyful mother, sister, daughter, aunt, even ex-wife, with thriving kids and a successful entrepreneur. What I have gained is the standalone courage to be true to myself and to be someone who can encourage others to their own victories. And through all this muck and backbreaking work, something beautiful has evolved in my family. We have redefined our family unit, and we are so proud of its diversity. My kids, now ages 10, 13, and 16, are growing into young, capable adults. They handle difficult situations with depth and confidence. They advocate for themselves. They care about and for other people. They clearly have seen the power of perseverance and determination. They, too, have had to create value where there was none. And they, too, have benefited from struggle and overcoming adversity. Now that our needs are well met through my thriving business, I'm free to be the complete person I want to be, which includes my desire to connect people with food. I have always felt like we can change the world by breaking bread at the table. 
important conversations begin at the table. Growing up in the Midwest, my memories of eating meals together with friends and family gave me a sense of confidence and community. I want to create this unity with my food, the very definition of rifulo, a place where people come together and meet. Persevering through my darkest moments has enabled me to fortify and strengthen my life, not because I've done something extraordinary, but because I have broken through my own narrow limitations and doubt of myself. When I see friends and families enjoying meals together, newborn babies now walking in the door, interns refueling for another shift, my 89-year-old good friend Bill conversing with high school teenagers, I feel such joy. Together with my customers, Refulo has become a space where it feels good to walk in the door. It feels good to support each other. This is my vision of community. Courage, to me, is never giving up, even though we may not visibly see the outcome. We are living in an age now where society is deeply lacking a sense of togetherness. So what can we do right now? Let's take a look at the family table that few join anymore. How have we lost the value of this precious family time? And how can we reconnect with our families to get them excited to rush to the family table and tell their memories of the day? We need this family table. As I look back on my life thus far, I see clearly that it is the challenges that we are faced with that are the exact medicine we need in order for us to create change in this world and right in our environment. Ironically, being given the chance to experience life with nothing enables us the ability to see what really matters in life. Thank you. Thank you.